Hey guys, welcome back to Day to Day Chess. This is Sabina, and as I was preparing the YouTube video for today, I've realized that I haven't really focused on women's chess on my YouTube um, channel. So I've decided for today to show a study, and game study, um, better said, composed by Judith Polgar, the strongest female chess player of all time in 1997. And uh, how did she come about to create this um, study, you might ask me? Well, she was playing this um, the game against um, Alexei Shirov in Dortmund in 1996, so a year before she composed this. And somehow, um, she when, when they analyzed this game, whether they analyzed it together or she did it on herself, she realized that there was some line where um, the position would lead to a Tsuzvang. So I've decided to share that position with you because I think it's a very beautiful King Pawn endgame study and I think everybody should know this position. Okay, so um, this is the position. It is why to move and win. Please try to pause the video and now that you know the theme, it should be easy for you to solve the position, at least I hope so. Um, okay, you're probably back now. And let's see how we go about this position. Well, as you check it out, you will realize that you are not able with Y to push this pawn, for example, before this would be a big blunder, because black is going to come with the king and he's going to be the first one to arrive on the fourth rank, what does the fourth rank mean? It means the same line of your pawns, and black is going to be able to capture your pawns. White will come a little bit too late to attack black's pawns, and here king takes b4, king takes b7. The correct move for black here is a5, after which black will capture the pawn in a4, get with the king out from in front of the pawn, and then go with the pawn to promotion. Obviously, if white comes and tries to catch that pawn, Black with his king is going to stop white from entering in front of the pawn. This is a very famous known king pawn endgame study, so I definitely would not recommend you to make such a blunder. So, how about other moves in this position for white? Would it work to play a5? Well, that would help a little bit, but unfortunately, the game still would not be ending in a win as black advances with their king towards e4. So it's always about the importance of the center. And now king d4, king d6, king c4, king c7. And although it seems that white is getting those two pawns, black is not going to go get this one. This one is the last one that black will capture. First we're going king b5, capturing this a5 pawn, and then coming to get this b2 pawn. So, you know, these things should be very easy uh, for any chess player to see. And then you should start thinking about the main line. What would be the main line? Well, since these kings are really very badly placed, white's king should be here and black's there, right? But now they are reversed. So, what's going on in this position? Well, white should come with the king because they are going to be the first ones getting a little bit more active than the opponent. So king e5, king e3. So we get into this position and um, here we should be thinking what to do next. Are we going to try to push the pawns? Are we going to try to bring our king to pick up that pawn? How are we going to approach this position? And you're going to realize that the import how important it is actually to have this king in the center. If you were to play king d5 in this position, you're missing the opportunity of winning the game. Not because black would play king d3, because here once again you can win, but let's just go through the line for a second. Let's say king b6. Now black doesn't capture the pawn, but goes king b3. And um, whether white is taking or playing a5, now black goes king a4, a very important move, and you're going to find out later why. After king takes b7, this is going to finish in a draw. So, 
going back to this position after king d5 black will not be playing king g3 it is very important for black to realize how their pawns should be placed in such a way that they are going to be able to save the game and the correct one and only move in this position for black is to play a5 because now when the king comes whether it goes to b5 or b6 it allows black to go king c2 and no matter which pawn you take you will have to come back later to get the other one and this time black has the right amount of time to come get your a4 pawn the same thing would have happened if instead of getting that b7 pawn white would have gotten this a5 pawn um, but either king b3 or king takes b2 in this case works because white is one tempo too late to save their pawn after king b4 black will be able to capture this pawn next move or trade it if you push a6 so um this is you know you see this position and you think it's so equal it should finish in a draw because you know both kings are coming towards the center both of them are coming towards the opposite sides pawns so you know what's the difference in this position what's What's so strange about it? Okay, you have the king which is a little bit more active than mine, but is it really going to bring you the win? And of course it does. If it wouldn't, I wouldn't have shown you this position. And like I said, Judith Polgar, she's amazing. Not only has she was she able to become one of the top female uh, chess players to compete against males and kind of change the perspective of women's chess, uh, she ha she's been amazing in doing a lot of things for chess plus she has been composing um, positions so what else can you want when uh, when you have to talk about about her such an amazing uh, person I've been and chess player unfortunately I never had the opportunity of meeting her but um, as a child I had her picture um, actually multiple pictures uh, sticked um, close to my bed and uh, it was kind of my inspiration um, it's true in chess I didn't get that high but um, she has been an inspiration for me to work hard and if you work hard and you're dedicated to what you're doing you're going to succeed so that's what I got from her I'm sure maybe other people got other things um, Chess-wise, of course, I was always inspired by her, uh, the way she was playing, and her dynamic chess, and um, wish to attack and you know win against uh, older older people, men. It didn't matter. Um, so I kind of got rid of that fear just by having her as you know my my inspirational person let's say so i hope you guys have one of those people if you don't look out there i'm sure at some point you're going to find somebody who will inspire you to do whatever you wish to anyways let's get back to this position because it's so nice i mean i think in, in a way um you you're dealing with elementary knowledge of king pawn endgame and in another way you're dealing with a little bit of, uh, of finesse as well and let's just see how is white winning in this position and what's important for you to notice is that at this particular point black so we said that in this position in order um, this one actually for um, after king e3 if white would just advance one more square the position would be draw after black would play a5 so this should give you the hint that white should be playing a5 right now uh, why is that well because now black is coming in g3 right is going towards that pawn we're coming as well and what's the black has no moves right black has to go pick up this pawn correct so black is gonna go king c2 and here once again we this is a critical position you need to pause the video and try to find out what is the the struggle that uh, black has to face in this position 
I mean, why is it so difficult? I mean, just come and getting your pawn and I come get that one, or I just come king b3, king b4 like previously. So what's the deal? Why is this position so different than the previous one? Well, not because I play king c5, because if I would, you just go king b3, and what's, I mean, right? We had this position before, king a4, takes, takes, draw. Or if you try to play b3 in this position, obviously I'm not going to take the pawn so that after king takes b7, I'm going to lose because I'm too far, one tempo far, to actually being able to save this position. Obviously here after king b5, a6, white is winning. So in this position, black would be playing king b4. White is in Tutzwang, you have to capture that pawn, and I'm going to capture the correct one this time, and make a draw. So not that simple, right? Going back. So what should white do in order to be able to win this position? The correct approach is king to d6. This is, I would put it a double exclamation move, because you're going to see in a second. If black captures in b2, again, he's too late. It's like before. We're going king c7, attacking the pawn. You can't push because we take en passant and the, uh, and the pawn promotes. And if black comes, simply they are one move behind. After king b7, we've got the same position as before, and white is winning. So we should try, after king d6, we should try to play king b3 to come really, really fast, pick up that pawn, and then come back and get this one. So it's not as simple, not, um, you can't just capture any pawn that you want. Okay, so in this position, once again, white has to realize what is the correct move for them to actually win this. If they go for king c7, which is the natural approach, Unfortunately for them, they're going to make a draw, because after king b4, that pawn is being attacked. Capture won't help, so king b6 is the only move that needs to be played. And now black will play king a4, giving you the move, and when you push b3, I am not taking the pawn, but going king b4, making sure that I'm capturing the a5 pawn first. That's why in this position, once again, white needs to find a really good move. And that good move is king to c5. I would give this move another double exclamation point. I don't know, maybe I'm being uh, too nice, but I mean, it's, it's something that you need to be familiar with, the king pawn endgames, but also... Um, it's the beauty of this because it seems very natural to go forward to pick up those pawns But in fact you go forward, but then you're restricting black's king in the same time So now after king c5 again black cannot just capture this pawn because obviously we've seen this variation three times There's no point to keep going through it black is supposed to play king a4 right now to attack that a5 pawn and now white goes king b6 protecting it you are in Tudvang, you cannot just go king b3, obviously. After that pawn is being lost, the a6 will be lost as well. So black has to play king b4, and in this position, white has the Tudvang, right, that I mentioned to you about, b3, the last move of the study, technically. And black is lost because after capturing the pawn or moving the king wherever, it doesn't matter, White will capture, and once again, I've already shown you this many times, White manages to play king b7 and promote this pawn. So this was the study that I really wanted to show you. I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, before I finish the video, I'd like to go back and ask you, I mean, maybe you have questions about why is it that black needs to come with the king so much? Why can't they, after king f3, king e5, why can't black just push a5, right? Because that was the move that seemed to, um, that they had to do. If the kings were a little bit further, that move would um, allow black to make a draw. So why can't they just play it a little bit earlier and then just come with the king? And the answer is because now white doesn't go king d5, but they go king d6. So white doesn't really need to restrict black anymore. Now they can just take the shorter way to pick up the pawns. And after, let's say, 
it doesn't matter really on which way black goes. Let's say they go e3 to come this way to pick up that pawn or come to b3 and pick up that one. Now king c7 and after king d3 let's say capture and in this position king b6 and whenever black is going to attack that pawn and protect theirs we've got the correct and only move if we really want to win to Zwang move b3. So this is the little problem in the position. Um, black is a little bit too behind with the king at that particular moment to be able to come capture these pawns. So that is the reason why it wouldn't work to make a draw. Um, this was the end game, guys. So the correct approach was first bring the king and then figure out the pawns because we need to restrict the opponent's king as much as we can. I really, I remember when I was a kid, um, I was uh, shown this by my dad, and recently I uh, ran across it, and I thought, ha, huh, that is the, this is the position that needs to be shown on my um, YouTube channel very soon, and here it is. I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to share it with your kids, friends, anything. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and uh, be sure to continue um, watching my YouTube channel for more information about further tournaments, classics, end game studies, end games, personal games, and many more. Stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.